Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a tier ranking of all of the YA fantasy books I've read. So I have a lot of books on this list to go through today. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get right into it so that this video isn't super long. So let me go ahead and share my screen with you. Okay, so here we are at the tier ranking. I will quickly explain the different categories. So the absolute best being my personal favorite YA fantasy books that I've read for all ages. These are books that I think are definitely worth your time, no matter what your age is. I think that certain YA fantasy books definitely can appeal to all ages versus some that maybe appeal more to the target audience, which is that 12 to 18 range. This was fine, meaning I think it appeals to all ages in some regards, but for me personally, it just wasn't a favorite. I think is great. Uh, for younger teens, these are ones that I didn't necessarily dislike. Uh, there's nothing wrong with these books, but because I am in my 30s now, I'm no longer in the target audience for these books. And some of these books truly are made for the target audience. So some of them, even though they can appeal to all ages, some of them truly are, I think, for the younger teens. So if you're someone that's kind of out of the age range of YA fantasy, like myself, maybe these are ones that you wouldn't be as interested in. And then nope, these are ones that just didn't work for me. I don't necessarily recommend them to really any age. <laughs> So let's get right into it. The first one I have is Blood Air. I definitely think that this is a great one for all ages. I really enjoyed this one when I read it. I didn't end up loving the rest of the series. I did DNF the second book in this series, but for the first book, I thought it was really well done. It was kind of this Russian-inspired world, very dark and gritty, very real consequences for the characters. So I think it read pretty mature for YA fantasy, and I really enjoyed it. And I Darken is another one that I think is awesome for all ages. I really, really enjoyed And I Darken. It has a very kind of unlikable, morally gray main character. So keep that in mind. And this almost reads more historical fiction rather than fantasy. It's just kind of a retelling of historical events. So in that regards, it's fantasy. But if you like your fantasy with less magic, more politics, this is a great one. Daughter of Smoke and Bone, for me, I'm going to say this was fine. However, I know that so many people love this series, so I definitely think it can appeal to all ages, and Lainey Taylor's writing is beautiful, but I just didn't love the story or the characters, so it's just not my personal favorite, but I know a lot of people who love it. So take my opinion with a grain of salt. An Ember in the Ashes is another one by Sabatier that I think is really good for all ages. I know a ton of people who absolutely love this series. I need to go back and reread the first book to continue on with the series, but I remember really enjoying it. I liked the characters. I liked the politics of the world, so I thought it was really well done. Um, so it's definitely one that I think can appeal to everyone. Pacifica by Kristen Simmons. I honestly don't remember this book at all, so I'm gonna put it in nope, even though I don't necessarily think anything was wrong with this book. It was just very forgettable for me. The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvater is the absolute best. I love The Raven Cycle so much. I very much cannot describe the plot to you, but I love the characters and I love the atmosphere of the series so much that ugh, it's one of my absolute favorites. So I definitely think it can appeal to all ages. It's wonderful. This Savage Song by Victoria Schwab I also think is one that's great for all ages. This is one that I really enjoyed. The concept behind it is really interesting and it's just a very dark world. I really liked the magic that was explored, the world building, so it was really good. Divergent. Okay, so I just have to say it's for all ages because this one is one that was so popular back in the YA dystopian phase and for a good reason. I thought it was a lot of fun when I read it as a teen, so I think it's awesome for teens, but I also think if you're beyond your teens now, uh, you would really enjoy it too. So it's just a classic, I feel like at this point, that it's worth your time just to see why it was so popular during its heyday. The Queen's Rising by Rebecca Ross is another one that was just very forgettable for me, so I honestly just have to put it in nope because I really don't remember much about it. So sad. 
An Enchantment of Ravens, we're gonna have a lot in the For All Ages. I think An Enchantment of Ravens was great. It's very cozy, it's short, it's sweet. I really liked the messages in it. I really liked the atmosphere of it. So I love An Enchantment of Ravens. I think it's great. Jacoby, uh, this one was fine. I, I think this is one that's like a paranormal fantasy mystery that's kind of set in, I think, Victoria, Victorian era England. And it was interesting, like the, the vibes of it were really interesting and I liked the main character, but the story itself just wasn't my favorite. So if you like paranormal fantasy, this might be for you, but it was fine for me. Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. This is a tough one because for me, I didn't love this one, but it could also be because when I read it, I was in my 20s. So I think if you are in the age range for YA fantasy, this is a really good one. And I know it's very, very popular, got an adaptation, and it must be popular for a reason, even though it wasn't necessarily for me. I do think if you're in the age range for YA fantasy, you'd really enjoy it. And I've seen other folks really enjoy it. So maybe it is for all ages, but for me, it just didn't really hit as hard. So I have to put it in for younger teens. Same with Falling Kingdoms. I actually really enjoyed this one, Falling Kingdoms by Morgan Rhodes. It's almost like the YA fantasy version of Game of Thrones. So if you like the kind of politics uh, in Game of Thrones and you're looking for a YA equivalent, I think Falling Kingdoms is a great one. It's got a lot of fun angsty type romance in it. It's got a lot of fun magic. Uh, and I think it's great for its target audience. I, I think that if you are 12 to 18, you would really enjoy Falling Kingdoms. These Rebel Ra Waves by Sarah Rush, another one that I just found very forgettable, unfortunately, so I gotta put that in nope. Kiss of Deception, uh, this is one, again, I think if I had read this as a teen, I would have absolutely loved it because I'd read it when I was past that age. Uh, it wasn't necessarily my favorite, but I do think for younger teens it would be a really fun one. And again, all of these that I put for younger teens, it doesn't necessarily mean that if you're past your teenage years, you won't enjoy them. It's just I think that they really are perfect for their target audience, but that's not to say that if you're older than the target audience, you wouldn't enjoy them. So it's just all subjective, and I do think that for its target audience, it's a great one. Same with Crown of Feathers by Nikki Palpretto. I personally didn't love this one. It didn't really do much for me, but I do think if I was younger, it would have really hit a lot harder and I would have really, really enjoyed it. I think the world building was really well done. The animal companions were really cool. So it had a lot of potential and I think for younger teens, it would be really good. Aragon, I have to get give it credit uh, for, for all ages. I think that Aragon is so extremely popular and for a good reason. I do think it feels like that classic fantasy epic quest story and I really enjoyed it reading it as an adult. I could really appreciate uh, how much went into it, especially given the age that the author was when he wrote this story. So I really appreciated it. I really enjoyed it and I think it would be good for all ages. The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness is one of my absolute favorites. Have to put it in the absolute best. Oh my goodness, I love this so much. I love the writing, I love the characters so, so much. The story, the mystery behind it, it's wonderful. So definitely absolute best. Heartless by Marissa Meyer was fine. I've seen a lot of people enjoy this one uh, and I've seen a lot of ages read it and enjoy it. So I'm, I'm gonna say it's, it can appeal to everybody, but I personally just didn't love it. It was fine, it was fine. Cinder is another one that I think is awesome for younger teens. Now, I read this at, in my 20s and really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the whole series. So again, I think that even if you're past your teenage years, you could really enjoy this one. But I think especially for younger teens, I feel like I would have been obsessed with this if I had read it when I was in that target audience. So the whole Lunar Chronicles is so much fun. I love the world building, the characters, the, the spin on these fairy tales. I loved it. It was so cute. It was so cute. Shatter Me by Tahira Mafi. I know that this one's very, very popular, but it was so not for me. I did not really like much about this book, unfortunately. I did not like the writing style at all. I think the writing style, it's very stylized. There's a very distinct writing style that it has and it's either gonna really work for you or it's not, and for me, it just didn't. So Shatter Me, I know a lot of people love it. So again, take my opinion with a grain of salt. Uh, you may really love this, but it was not for me at all. Throne of Glass. Gotta put it in all ages. Throne of Glass, I mean, you just kinda gotta read it just to see 
what all the hype is about. It's a great gateway into fantasy if this is kind of your first foray into epic fantasy. The Throne of Glass series, I do think it matures as it goes on and the world expands so much and it gets very political and there's a lot of battles and it gets really good. The cast of characters just grows so much and the first couple books I think read a little bit younger where it's a little bit more focused on like the romance and the angst but as that series goes on it really does mature so I do think this series is great for all ages. A lot of people aren't gonna love it which is totally fine but you kind of got to read it just to see if it's for you and to see what all the hype was about. Sky Hunter by Marie Lu. I'm also going to put in Great for All Ages. I do think that this one I read a couple years ago, so I was in my late 20s, and I enjoyed it. I really liked the main character. I really liked the, again, the politics of it. I thought it was hitting on some really interesting themes, but unfortunately, the it, this is a duology, and the second book just didn't really work for me, but I really liked the first book. I thought it was really good. Same thing with The Young Elites uh, by Marie Lu. This is another one that I think could work for all ages. Uh, what I really liked about this one was the protagonist is not necessarily the good guy, which I really, I liked seeing that explored in a young adult fantasy. I hadn't really seen that explored before, so that was a really good one. Sawkill Girls by Claire Legrand. I do think all ages could enjoy this one, but Ah, I really liked the first half of this book. The second half kind of went off the rails for me a little bit and got pretty weird, um, but I really liked the first half. It was very dark, mysterious, kind of gritty. So it, it was good for the first half and then the second half kind of dropped it for me, but I thought it was fine. And I do think all ages could enjoy it if, if it works for you. Spin the Dawn, uh, I do think that this is a great one for younger teens. Again, if I had read this when I was still a teenager, I think I would have loved it. Because I had read it in my 20s, it wasn't my favorite. Um, I thought it was a little too focused on the romance and it got a little questy for me in the second half, but I can definitely see the target audience loving this. Skyward, oh, that first book, Skyward by Brandon Sanderson, I love that first book so much. The rest of the series we don't have to talk about, but the first book, Skyward, so, so good. Love the main character, love the action, love the mysteries so, so much. Oh my gosh, so good. Strange the Dreamer also has to go in the absolute best. The writing is beautiful, it's very emotional, and the characters are wonderful. I thought the romance was done really well. It was just a perfect book. So I definitely think Strange the Dreamer can appeal to anyone and everyone, and it's it's one of those rare YA fantasies that anyone, no matter how old you are, you can enjoy it um, for what it is. It's, it's wonderful. Six Crimson Cranes is another one that I think is great for younger teens. Again, it read a little young for me when I read it, but I can definitely see teenagers loving this. It, it is a very sweet, it almost feels kind of like Disney-like in its quality. Uh, it, it was really cute. I really liked that one. It would make a really good Disney movie. <laughs> Lifelike by Jay Kristoff, I think is one that could appeal to all ages. This is more sci-fi and Jay Kristoff's writing is either gonna work for you or it's not. His world building is very distinct and very stylized. So if you don't love his style of world building, Lifelike's not gonna be for you, but I actually thought it was quite dark. I really liked it. I liked the darker tone that it took on. The main character is, again, not necessarily the good guy. It was really interesting the way it was done. So I liked it and I think it could appeal to all ages. Same with A Curse of Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. This is a great one. I don't necessarily love the rest of the series, but I loved the first book for what it was. I thought it was adorable. Illumine, uh, Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I loved Illumine, loved it when I read it. I loved the style of the storytelling. It was my first time ever reading a book that wasn't in like a traditional, story structure like it had all these mixed media articles and chat rooms and surveillance videos and it had all these different things about it that made it really unique and then I just loved the exploration of the AI and the characters and oh I thought it was so good I loved Illuminae the rest of the series, again, it kind of, the first book for me really was the standout. The rest of the series isn't my favorite, but I love that first book. 
The Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa is another one that I absolutely loved. I thought it was so cute. It's just a Japanese inspired fantasy. I loved the world building. I loved the characters. The quest story totally worked for me. I thought it was adorable. And I definitely think it, it reads a little bit younger where uh, if younger teens could love it. But I also loved it as like a 30 year old. So I, I think it, I think it's great for everyone. Fireborn is another one that I think this is one of those that I think if the characters had been aged up just a couple years, you would see it in adult fantasy. This is one that I definitely think toes the line, probably more than any of the others I've talked about so far, toes the line between young adult and adult. If there was a new adult category, right in between, I think Fireborn would be in it. It's really good, the politics of it, just the way it examines society post-revolution, it's so, so good. So highly recommend that one. Ray Bearer, I think is also great for younger teens. Uh, I actually really enjoyed this one. I thought that the friendships were amazing, the world building was beautiful, and I think I would have been obsessed if I was younger and had read that one. So I need to reread it and finish off the duology, but I really liked that first book. I think it's awesome for its target audience. A Thousand Pieces of You, I love this story uh, by Claudia Gray. This is such a good one and it's not my absolute favorite, but oh my gosh, is it close. It is really cool. It's exploring like parallel universes, multiverse type stuff, but in a really cool and unique way. And I just thought it was really, really well done. So I loved the story and the plot. The characters weren't necessarily my favorite and that's probably why it's not an absolute favorite for me, but the story itself, the plot, oh my gosh, was so good. Ah, oh, Strange Grace by Tessa Gratton. No, no, it did not work for me at all. No, I, I honestly don't remember a ton about this book, but I remember just really not liking it. <laughs> so that was not for me. All right, Caraval by, Oh my gosh, Stephanie Garber. Uh, this was fine. It's fine. I know so many people love it. So this one, def I, I definitely think has appeal for all ages because I've seen so many people talk about this book and love it. So I don't necessarily think it's only for younger teens, but it still wasn't for me. I just didn't love the mystery or the characters. I just, I think it's a little overhyped for me, but it's fine. It's fine. You, you should check it out for yourself and see if it's for you because a lot of people love it. The Gilded Ones I think is good for all ages. Um, this is one that I probably, uh, should I get, nah, I, I gotta put it in this was fine. Only because I think the ending really, really dropped it off for me, but the story itself is actually quite compelling and it's pretty violent. So I definitely think it can appeal to all ages, but unfortunately, if, if it ended differently, it could be in uh, for all ages category, but it was fine. It was fine. It was, some parts of it were really good. Um, and then some parts I just didn't love. <clears throat> Wicked Saints, no. Emily A. Duncan, uh, Wicked Saints, yeah, no, this was not for me. I thought it was very, very tropey uh, to the point where I just really didn't find anything very unique about it um, and I just I didn't love I just didn't love it <laughs> so it's a nope for me Legendborn I think is a great one for all ages I read this one a couple years ago as well and I loved it I thought it was so much fun it's not an absolute favorite but I had so much fun with this one it has like a lot of fun angsty type romance it's got like a, a, a academia type setting it's got really cool magic in it it's got a lot that I think would appeal to a bunch of different people. So Legendborn's a great one. Nine of Swords by Brooklyn Quintana. This was one that was a self-published book that was sent to me by the author and I really enjoyed this one. It's very long. I think it could have been cut down a little bit, but it has kind of a, a game type aspect to it, like a competition. It's got a really cool setting, a great cast of characters with a great found family. So I really enjoyed that one. I thought it was very cute. Truth Witch. This is another one that I've seen so many people love and all ages love. So again, take my opinion with a grain of salt. Uh, when I read it, I thought it was fine. It didn't do much for me, but because I know a lot of people love it, I, I gotta put it in, this was fine for, for all ages potentially, not just for younger teens. Um, so you gotta check it out for yourself to see if you'd like it. But for me, it was, it was just fine.
The Maze Runner. I loved this book when I read it. I loved The Maze Runner. I could not put this book down. The mysteries, I, ju I just had to know what was going on. I was so invested and it wasn't even like the characters. Like I liked the characters, but oh my gosh, the plot, I just had to know what was going on. It was so compelling. Uh, so I, I love the first book. I think the first book is my favorite for sure in that trilogy. I know, I think it's now there's even more books, I want to say, but the first book was so good. So good. I loved that first book. And then The Hunger Games. I mean, we've got to put it in the absolute best. Suzanne Collins. I don't even need to talk to you about The Hunger Games. If you haven't read it, go read it. It's great. It was, you know, the most popular for a reason. It's awesome. Uh, Clockwork Angel and the entire Infernal Devices trilogy, I'm also going to put in the absolute best because that trilogy made me so emotional. I was so invested in the characters. I loved the setting. The, it's all about the characters. Like for a lot of these, it's more about the plot and, and that's why I love it. But this one, it's the characters. It's all about them. Loved the Infernal Devices. Now on the other hand, Mortal Instruments is fine. It's fine. I know so many people, again, love it. So you got to kind of check it out for yourself because it's popular for a reason. But City of Bones was weird. Like it had some weird stuff in it. And I was very confused at first why it was so popular. But then it does get better as the series goes on. I'll, I'll give it that. Like the rest of the series isn't as weird <laughs> and isn't as like young, I would say. But you got to check it out for yourself. It was fine. For me, it was fine. The Siren by Kiera Cass, I think. I think this is the author who did like the selection series. And I don't know why I read The Siren. It had like a pretty cover. I think for younger teens, it's a good one. Uh, when I read it, I think I was just a little too old for it, but it re read really, really young. I don't remember much about it. It was years ago that I read this one. So yeah, I think for younger teens, like for its target age range, it's, it's a good one, but I don't remember much. <laughs> A Song of Wraiths and Ruin, I think it's great for all ages. This is another one that has really interesting character dynamics, really interesting plot, uh, and it kept me very engaged throughout. Now, I didn't love the second book, but the first book, I was definitely intrigued, had to know what was going to happen with these characters. They're put in really tough situations, and you're like, what would I do in this situation? It's really good. So I like that first book. <sighs> Passenger by Alexandra Bakken. This was just a no for me. I just didn't love this one. Um, it's like time travel, but I just found it so dull, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. The Diviners though, absolute best by Libba Bray. This is so good. Now, I can't believe I DNF'd the second book. Shocking, because that first book, amazing. So creepy, so haunting, and like the New York City 20s, 1920s setting, so much fun. I loved this book every second of it. And the audiobook is fantastic. You gotta check that out, the audiobook, if you're gonna read it. So good. The Darkest Minds by Alexandra Bracken. I, I gave up on Alexandra Bracken after not liking Passenger or The Darkest Minds. I just find The Darkest Minds so bizarre. The concept behind it just doesn't make any sense to me, and I just really, really didn't like it. So yeah, I, that one is a dope. Uh, Vengeance Road. I think this is more historical fiction young adult, not necessarily fantasy, but it was, it was a note for me. It was not, not my favorite. I didn't really find anything super compelling about it, unfortunately. Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Barron. I think that this is a great one for younger teens. I thought it read a little young again when I read it as like a 20 something, uh, but I think for the target age range, it's great. And it's a really interesting concept about like, what if, Cinderella, that fairy tale really happened. How does society function after Cinderella is gone? And and how does her legacy kind of continue on? And I thought that was really cool to explore. So I, I liked a lot of aspects of it, but it was just a little young for me. Kingdom of Souls by Rena Baron is one that I think could appeal to all ages. The magic is wild. The family dynamics are crazy. I loved how dark this got. It was really, really good. So I, I really like Kingdom of Souls. Six of Crows and Shadow and Bone for me are favorites. I know a lot of people uh, don't love the Grisha trilogy, but I love them. Uh, it was kind of my first foray into young adult fantasy was with these books. And I just, 
was obsessed after that. I had to read all the YA fantasy because I loved these so, so much. The character work, the plot, the magic, I just loved it all. It felt very tropey, but in the best kind of way. Storm and Fury by Jennifer L. Armentrell was fine. I don't remember a ton about it, and I think I have a review of it on my channel from like way back when, when I like first started my channel, and it was fine. Uh, but yeah, I don't remember too much about it. Scythe is another absolute best. I love Scythe. I love how dark it is, the uh, moral questions it asks, the cool setting and just themes that it touches on are so interesting. Mirage by Samaya, Dade, uh, Samaya Dodd. I think that this is one that, I, again, I would have liked a lot more if I had been younger and read this one. I think it's really good for younger teens. It's got a girl who kind of is like coming from like a peasant life and acts as a body double for a princess and kind of got interesting politics and interesting character dynamics, but it was just a little young for me. Red Queen, uh, this is a hard one, um, by Victoria Aveyard. I think this is fine for me. I didn't love it and it was very, very tropey, but I know so many people love it and like all ages seem to really love it. So I, I'm gonna put it in this was fine because I think it can appeal to everybody, but it was just a little too tropey for me. It didn't do anything super unique for me. Um, and I had read quite a few fantasy, like YA fantasy before I had read Red Queen. But maybe if this was like my first foray into YA fantasy, I would have enjoyed it a lot more. But yeah, I, it, was, it was fine. And then last, The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by Axie O. I think that this is a great one for younger teens. Uh, again, I read it and just kind of wanted more from it. I wanted more world building. I wanted more character development. But I think for younger teens, it it's really a sweet story. It's got beautiful imagery. It's got really cute characters. I think it could really appeal and I probably would have liked it a lot more, but as someone who reads a lot of adult fantasy now, I just wanted like more development of everything. So that is my tier ranking of all the YA fantasy books I've read and YA sci-fi books I've read. Uh, what did you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? What is your favorite YA fantasy that you've ever read? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to, and I will see you all in my next one. Bye!